So this is our introduction to matrices or the singular matrix. Now, what's a matrix? It's easiest if I show you some examples. That is a matrix. Now, this is also a matrix. Another matrix right here and one more matrix. And there we have it. All of these are matrices. A matrix, a matrix, a matrix, a matrix, a matrix. A matrix is just a table of numbers. Now, it's convention that when we name these, we name them with capital letters. So that makes things easier because I can call this matrix A now and I can call this matrix D. Now, the first important thing you need to know is the order of a matrix. The order of a matrix is its size as measured by the number of rows and the number of columns. So if we were to write down the order of all these matrices, we would say that matrix A has an order of two by three, is a two by three matrix. Matrix B is a two by two matrix. Matrix C, C is interesting, it's what's called a column vector because it has three rows, but only one column. So it is a three by one. D is the opposite of that. D has one row and three columns, called a row vector. So it's a one by three matrix. And finally, matrix E is a, another two by two matrix. Now, of course, the mistake students make here is doing this in the wrong order. So in other words, they'll count across first and then down. But you have to make sure that this first number is how many rows, how many down, and then you count across. Doing this is really, really important. I know it doesn't seem important, but later on when you start doing matrix multiplication, this becomes so important. All right, write it all down. So new idea, and I have a new matrix, matrix F. Now what we need to talk about are elements. Every single number in a matrix is called its element. And we have a particular way of naming all of these elements. And here it is, F and then subscript one comma one. That's element row one, column one. This is element row one, column two. This is element row one, column three. And in this way, we can identify all of our elements easily. I should write that word down. This matrix has six. Now you might get asked to identify a particular element for a matrix. So for example, matrix A, matrix A, row two, column three, row two, column three. The answer there is four. All right, uh, matrix B, Matrix B, uh, row two, column one. The answer there is negative four. And matrix E down here, row one, column two, negative one. So you need to make sure when you're doing this, you're counting down how many rows, and then you're counting across how many columns. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now you can treat matrices like numbers in that you can add them, subtract them, multiply them together. The rules are kind of similar, but also they change a little bit. Now for addition and subtraction, it's really straightforward, but there is one rule here. If you're gonna add two matrices together, they must be the same size. So if I look at my list here, there's only two matrices that I can add together. Can you spot them? All right, um, B is a two by two matrix and E is a two by two matrix. So they're the only two matrices from this list that I'm allowed to add together. So we can write it algebraically, matrix B plus matrix E equals, we'll write it out, two, three, negative four, one, plus E, that's two, negative one, three, zero. And then adding matrices together could not be easier. We just match up our elements. So two plus two is four. Let's put a bracket there. Three plus negative one, need to be careful with your negatives. Three plus negative one is two. Negative four plus three, need to be careful with your negatives, negative one. And one plus zero is one. That is matrix B plus E. Now let's call that example one because I'm gonna do another example that's gonna change only slightly. And so here's our second example and you can see now it's B minus E. So same matrix B minus same matrix E. Works the same way, two minus two. That's gonna be zero, let's put a bracket there. 
3 minus minus 1. 3 minus minus 1. You've got to be careful. It is 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And 1 minus 0 is 1. So addition, subtraction could not be simpler. Let's do another example, a bit of a trick question. So we're going to add together matrix C plus D. C plus D. Uh-oh. They're not the same size. They're not the same order. This is a 1 by 3 and this is a 3 by 1. We can't add those together. We can't match the element, so it's not going to work. So we just write, not possible. And you can see there's lots of um, combinations of matrices that just aren't going to work there. So that's addition and subtraction of matrices. Now, uh, we could have done other versions if I'd shown you another column matrix and we could add the two column matrices together. As long as they're the same order, the same size, we can add them together. Otherwise, we can't. All right, we've got to move on to one more thing. So multiplying a matrix by a scalar. What do I mean by a scalar? Let's not get too fancy here. A scalar is just a number. So what if I took matrix B and multiplied it by three? So I could just write it like that, 3B. There's a little tiny multiply sign there, just like with regular algebra. This is gonna work exactly how you think it should. Three times matrix B, which is 2, 3, negative 4, 1. 3 times this matrix, you just multiply every single element by the number 3. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and 3 times 1 is 3. We just multiply the matrix by a scalar. It really doesn't matter that's what size it is. It's always going to work like that. So one more example. Uh, let's call it uh, negative 4C. Uh, okay, so negative 4 times C. We write negative 4. We write our matrix C, which is 1, 2, negative 5. And we multiply every element by negative 4. That's going to be... Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. Could not be easier. Now, we can combine multiplication by a scalar and addition and subtraction if we want to. So here we have it, 3b minus 2e. We're multiplying two matrices by scalars, and then we're subtracting them from each other. It works just like any algebra you've done in the past. We have three times the matrix that we're interested in, minus two, and then the matrix we're interested in, two, negative one, three, zero. We multiply, order of operations, we multiply first. So we're gonna get six, nine, negative 12, and three, minus uh, two times two, which will be four, two times negative one, which is negative two, two times three, which is uh, six, and two times zero, which is zero. And then we subtract each element. So six negative four is two, nine minus minus two is 11, negative 12 minus six is negative 18, and three minus zero is three. And we have an answer. Now, if you're cluey, you might have been watching me here and thinking, wait, wait a minute, this is a negative two. If you want to see it as a negative two, you can see that as a negative two, but you would need to have a little plus sign in there, right? Because it's this plus negative two. If you did that, you, this would become a plus sign and then all of these elements would be getting multiplied by the negative two. And so then you'd have a plus here, a bunch of negatives in here, and the whole thing would come out in the wash and you'd end up with this answer as well. If that's gone over your head, don't worry. You're gonna do some practice, you're gonna do some questions, and if that comes up, you're gonna find out whether you understood that or not. But it works just like regular algebra, do it like regular algebra, you won't have any problems. That is our introduction to matrices.